The big question is how do we teach our community how to be better stewards of our land, water, and soil? I believe that the answer is food. We all eat. Raise your hand if you compost at home. Well, then you all know that composting makes me so happy. <laughs> These mountains of compost behind the library at my school, they have given me hope that old dogs can learn new tricks. We sent 1,700 pounds of food waste to the landfill every week. Now we compost 100% of our food waste, decreasing our carbon footprint, increasing the water holding capacity and the soil fertility, and saving money, lots of money. We save over $20,000 a year. Each student, each faculty participates in this food waste system. And it is my hope, and they do it every day, and it is my hope that they take this home with them and teach their families and their friends that composting is normal. It's not just for farmers. Composting is just the beginning. Learning where our food comes from, to me, that's the key. And a new opportunity in 2014 arose. Karen Bentrip, our volunteer garden manager, and I stood behind the science building and viewed the wasted landscape. This land had been abused and neglected for years with chemical fertilizers, herbicides, and soil compaction. The irrigation had broken the year before, and the once lush, chemically fertilized lawn had turned into a dust bowl with the soil flowing down the hill with each infrequent but intense rainfall. And of course, you know, the New Mexico wind. Well, now the irrigation was fixed. They were about to reseed with more high, use, high water use Kentucky bluegrass. And Karen and I said, ooh, we got a better idea. We wanted to grow food organically and sustainably, but we wanted more than a school garden. So we turned to Gary Nabhan for inspiration. In Gary's new book, Growing Food in a Hotter, Drier Land, he teaches us that food can be grown sustainably, even in the face of climate change. So with Gary's words of wisdom, Karen's incredible farming knowledge, and my tenacity, the Desert Oasis Teaching Garden was born. Our vision of a small school garden had grown into a teaching institute where we could plant seeds of hope for tomorrow, implement desert-adapted agricultural practices, unify the power of technology with the diverse New Mexico cultural heritage, but most importantly, to demonstrate respect and reverence for our planet. But to do this, we needed a team. So we cultivated those people back there, the students, the alumni, the parents, the faculty, and the local experts to help us build this garden. With water rebate money, we were able to hire a designer to create a design for us that would embody our values. And this design included things like a food forest, terrace drylands, a fruit and nut tree orchard, demonstration gardens, vegetable gardens, and even an outdoor classroom. But before we began, we needed to build the soil. So, we spread 67 cubic yards of homegrown compost over the first quarter acre of our land. I'm telling you, that was, that took us two weeks. And then, the next thing we did is we planted a cover crop to break up the hard pan and increase the fertility of our soil. By the end of the summer, we had a pollinator heaven. But, Soil health was not our only problem. We had a gopher infestation that was enormous. 
There were so many holes that I began to worry that those children would fall through, never to be found again. So we had to teach them. This is the New Mexico Extension officer, Sam. We had to teach the students how to trap and, yes, recycle the gophers. We also had a lot of dying trees because of that broken irrigation line I was telling you about. Well, the trees, the beautiful pine trees that had been there for years were beginning to die. And so we had to dig out the soil and build these soil sponges. And soil sponges help to kind of capture that water in the soil and slowly deliver it to the roots of the tree. Next one. We then raised 10 beds, more to come, to put our vegetables in. We are growing organically, and these vegetables will soon be irrigated with water harvested from the roof. The students, using their math and computer skills, helped me to estimate the appropriate size and number of these cisterns that will soon store the water. Every spring, we have a lovely greenhouse where the students will seed and grow the plants that we'll sell to our community to raise funds. Last Saturday, we raised $1,000. We have another sale coming up soon. In the fall, the students harvest the produce, the organic produce, and then they send it up the hill to the dining hall for everyone to eat. Of course, children of all ages enjoy our pet worms, whose castings we create a compost tea with to fertilize our vegetables. We also hold incredible workshops. Tiana Baca, who's in the audience today, and Barbara um, Garrity helped us create these beautiful baskets out of irrigation drip tape. We also hold walk workshops to teach our community how to build those soil sponges and how to take better care of their trees in a desert system. Tiana here and Karen over here and Julie are holding Ask an Organic Grower work, uh, presentation. We also have national experts as well, like Sandra Postel from the Global Water Policy Institute come and enrich our community knowledge. At the Desert Oasis Teaching Garden, we believe that everyone must eat. Well, they all eat. But since everyone eats, they can all participate in reducing the human impact on the planet. With every bite we take, every hole we dig, every seed we plant, every tomato we harvest, every worm we grow, and every drop of water we collect, we can begin to understand and cherish the intricate and complex relationships that make up our life on this planet. Our goal is to reach beyond the school boundaries out across the globe to other desert communities. We encourage both young and old to learn through experiential education. We welcome all to come and learn at the Desert Oasis Teaching Garden. Thank you.